Hello, welcome to Security Tests for Security Groups Shifted Left. I'm Rosemary Wong, a developer advocate at HashiCorp. And today I'm going to talk about something that's really near and dear to me. And that's how do you secure infrastructure as code by default? There's a really interesting problem we encounter quite often, and that's the application isn't working. Whenever we hear the statement, we get this nice sinking feeling and we have to think about, well, how do we debug? And usually the first place we debug as network engineers or infrastructure engineers is the firewall. Is there a security group somehow blocking that traffic? Is there an endpoint security groups more specifically in Cisco ACI that is allowing that traffic? We don't really know and we have to go investigate. And once we investigate, we come across, well, a really interesting realization and that's, oops, we forgot to add it. It's a common enough occurrence that when you try to make changes to your firewalls or security groups, they might be manual. You might do them once, allow that traffic and forget about it. But when you use infrastructure as code or you try to express the firewall and security groups as code, you have a way of automating and tracking those changes within your system. So today I'm going to answer the question in about five minutes of how do you automatically synchronize your IP addresses from a service catalog to an endpoint security group and remove this manual worry. And that way you can avoid saying, oops, I forgot to add the security group. And more importantly, I'm going to answer the question of how you get a secure by default configuration when you do this automation. It's great that you can run some as code and automate those changes between your service catalog and your endpoint security group. But how do you make sure that's actually secure? How do you know someone didn't accidentally inject a misconfiguration into that security group? So the criteria we're going to try to fulfill today is that it must have a secure by default configuration. I picked a few good configurations that we should probably consider, including disabling flood and encapsulation, enforcing preferred policy control, and setting quality of service priority class. And we must have this fully automated. We don't want someone injecting bad infrastructure as code into this kind of automation because that could be, well, insecure. So the solution I'll walk through today is how you do security testing for an endpoint security group as code, as well as how you automatically sync those services from catalog to Cisco ACI. So effectively, the end-to-end -end solutions should be a secure infrastructure as code that automates a lot of this workflow for you, and you don't have to worry about its security or its functionality. Today, I'm going to be using a couple of tools. The first is an endpoint module for Terraform, and I'm also going to be using the tests uh, that are written in PyTest. I'm also going to show a little bit of console Terraform sync, which synchronizes the service catalog in HashiCorp console using a Terraform module. So we're trying to do this automation as code and making sure it's as secure as possible. Let's get started with the demo. All right, so on the left side, you have my terminal and on the right side, you have the service catalog in console. If you're not as familiar with console, that's all right. Console is a way that you can register services automatically and it stores that information. The first time I run console Terraform sync, I'm synchronizing all of the services like web and API using Terraform to a Cisco ACI endpoint security group. You'll notice that my Terraform creates a web and an API endpoint security group, and it matches those IP addresses. So when I create that security group, it's creating a match expression on the IP address based on that service catalog. Underneath all of this, is a module that I've specifically written that's custom for this automation. So when I add a new service like database, a new service like database automatically gets registered and its IP address then gets added to the Cisco endpoint security group. Now, all of this is to say that I'm not touching any of this. I don't have to go through and manually decide, okay, database is at a specific IP address, as you'll notice that I'm doing in console. I don't have to know that the database is at 10.5.0.6. Instead, console Terraform sync is picking up that change from console and doing it for me. Underneath all of this is a module. If you're not as familiar with Terraform, it's an infrastructure as code tool. The idea is that I'm able to declare the kinds of infrastructure resources I want and need to create with certain attributes. So within these attributes, 
I have a few things that I want to focus on. First is the flood on in cap as well as the priority. When I first plan out these changes in infrastructure, uh, I can generate a dry run. This is basically something that tells me these are the changes you're planning to make. So when I run a Terraform plan out, Terraform show, I export my dry run capability to a JSON. A JSON, you can take a look, has a bunch of values in it. Um, some of these values are going to be useful and some of them are not. But we can use this dry run to test what attributes we need. And this is where security testing becomes important. In this dry run contains attributes and possible misconfigurations. I can pull in that JSON, parse it, such as using a plan values, et cetera, retrieve the security groups from that and test specific attributes and configuration. I can test whether or not, let's say, flood on in cap is enabled or disabled before I even apply those changes to live infrastructure. Even quality of service, I can check if it's unspecified. I can also check if my policy control enforcement is added and I can check what kind of match expression I added. So maybe someone wants to add a match expression that's not valid, I can test that too. So by shifting the test left, what I'm able to identify early is that someone forgot to put PC ENF pref. So they forgot to add policy control enforcement, which means someone actually can go in and add the correct configuration to this Terraform configuration and this Terraform module that's going to be automated. This makes it in some ways secure by default. I'm setting best practices as well as the knowledge very early on so someone can make the changes proactively, run these tests again, pass knowing that, that this configuration is secure by default. So anytime console Terraform Sync runs the configuration, I know that it is secure by default. It's conforming to my organization's standards of the kinds of attributes that I need. And I can make sure that as it continues and continues to run and I change it, it's continuously conformant. Well, that's the end of the demo. If you're interested in learning more, check out this code repository here. It has some additional resources on all of these tests as well as console Terraform Sync. And if you're interested in learning more about infrastructure as code and shifting security testing left, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Thank you.